If you are new, welcome. My name is Kendall, and today is Friday. I love Fridays. Um, I always get excited for the weekends, and then Fridays is when I really plan what we're doing for the weekend. But yeah, so I want to talk to you guys about anxiety. So this video, I'm hoping, will help somebody or help somebody open up about their anxiety. But truly, all I want to do is share my experiences and what I'm doing to cope with it. So then hopefully, if you suffer from anxiety, maybe some of my tips will help you. But without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so let's start. I never really had anxiety until I had my daughter. When I had my daughter, I just remember when I left... Okay, not even when I left the hospital. When I was still in the hospital, I was crying a lot. I was happy, but I would just cry. And then when we got home from the hospital, it was kind of the same thing. For weeks, I would just cry and cry and cry. And there really was no reason. Um, and then it kind of just little by little turned into more anxiety if I should if that's the right words because I never was depressed and I still am not depressed I've never experienced really depression um, I've gone through weeks of funk where like you self-doubt yourself and that kind of stuff but it never lasted more than a week my entire life you just go through moments in life where you're kind of like in a rut um, but it just, it kind of just manifested um, month after month. And, you know, I did have a lot of things happen in my life that normal people don't really experience. Um, you know, my, my husband's ex-wife, you know, she ended up having issues and she needed a place to stay. So she moved in with us. And it was right after I got home from, the day I got home from the hospital is when she moved in. So I dealt with um, my own insecurities, you know, my ex-husband's, you know, or not my ex-husband, my husband's ex-wife was living with us and it was, it was just rough. Um, mind you, when I got pregnant, me and my husband were only together for about a year, maybe a little more. So, you know, I still had that, that jealousy kind of issue going on, you know, you, you still have, you're not used to having kids 24-7, and now she moved in, so now we have her child that's not with, that was not with my husband, and then the three boys that were from my husband, so it was just a lot of kids all the time, a newborn baby, all my family lived in Florida. At this time, I lived in Indiana, and which I'll, in another story, do how I've met my husband and that kind of stuff. But, so there was a lot of things that happened as soon as I gave birth, and it was very life-changing. Um, but, in another story time, I will get to how putting the children first really changes a lot and you end up getting relationships with people that you wouldn't think that you would have. <coughs> Excuse me. But that will be another story time. Um, but then I ended up getting control of my life. My daughter was about six months old or so. And it was to the point where I could actually leave her for like an hour. She was breastfed and um, she would only eat off of one breast. The other breast wouldn't pump. So I literally for 13 months or so breastfed with one breast. And um, I struggled with that. I had blisters which turned into, oh my gosh, you know what if I can't feed her anymore like this? What am I going to do? It was just so much stress and I was by myself. Um, my husband worked nights too, which didn't help 
at all. It kind of made it a little bit worse. But with not having my family, it really started sinking in and the anxiety started. Um, so then after that, I got mastitis twice from my child biting me. And um, when they breastfeed and they bite you, it can cause mastitis. Well, I ended up getting that twice. <coughs> Which did not help my anxiety issues. It just ended up being another thing added on. And I didn't know how to cope with any of this. So, you know, everything just... And I kept everything inside, so it just built and built and built. And then... Um, Back to where I started getting my life together. We started going to the gym all the time. Um, and then once I started getting healthy and working out, I started ending up with like nausea every day and stomach pains. And I have one of my biggest phobias is vomiting. I don't like to feel nause nauseous. I don't like vomiting. I can't handle when somebody else vomits. I can't handle when somebody else gags. It will put my anxiety through the roof, total freak out mode. Um, that is one of my biggest anxiety triggers. And I was having that every single day. And um, I would eat certain things and it would be worse. Well, I went to my gynecologist and they said it might be my new birth control. And so we got off birth control and it was still happening. So then they're like, okay, well, maybe it's just your anxiety and stuff making you nauseous and not feel good every day. <coughs> and I was like, well, that's not it because that's what's triggering my anxiety, if that makes any sense. I don't have anxiety before the symptoms. It's the symptoms and then the anxiety. So, after going back and forth with the doctors, I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to see a specialist because nobody can figure this out. Um, so I went to a, um, I can't even think of the name, but it's your digestive and your gut doctor. Um, I went to see him and he was like, you're going to go get an ultrasound. And I was like, okay. He's like, because I think you might have gallstones. And I was like, I felt so relieved but scared at the same time. But I was relieved that hopefully we had an answer. And sure enough, I had thousands, he said. And I was like, well, why did it take a year for somebody to figure that out? And I guess between my age and or how young I was, and I never had any pain because I guess when you have gallstones, you're supposed to be in like excruciating pain. Um, and I never had any pain. I was just nauseous all the time. Um, so that whole year being sick all the time really put me in the biggest rut of my life. And I still, I still suffer with it. It really traumatized me um like I'm scared to go to stores because I'm like what if I instantly start feeling like I did when I had the gallstones or you know stuff like that and then I got diagnosed with GERD which is severe acid reflux because there's like a valve up in here somewhere that opens and closes and mine stays open it doesn't close so acid can always come up there's no blocker so I've been on medication for that for four years, and it helps, but there's still bad days. And there's days where it comes out of nowhere. Like, I could be perfectly fine, and all of a sudden, I get really bad chest pains, and I'm sweating, and I gotta take clothes off, and it hurts so bad. Um, to where one day I went to the hospital, I'm like, I'm having a heart attack, and they hooked me up to all these machines, and at the end of the day, it ended up being acid reflux, and they gave me Pepsid. And I was asking them, you know, how could acid reflux feel like this? And they said, 
that acid reflux has the same symptoms of a heart attack, like the same pain. The only difference is your arm doesn't get tingly and numb. But other than that, it's the same pain. So just think about that, and I get those randomly, like without a warning, just randomly. And, you know, I'm scared to have that out in public, you know. So ever since the gallstones and everything, I always have a medicine bag that's in my purse. It's got Pepsi, Peptol, Bismol, and um, Tylenol and my acid reflex medicine and I will not I will literally not go anywhere without that bag that bag is such a security blanket for me that like if I leave it at home we have to turn around and go back just to grab it even though I feel perfectly fine it is such a security blanket for me and you know it, it sucks to have that but at the end of the day if that's what helps that's what helps um, and it does help a little bit, but <clears throat> like I said, my my anxiety is extreme, but stupid at the same time. Like, pretty much the main reason that I don't like to leave my house is because I don't want to randomly, you know, have the chest pains, the random nausea, you know, the random stomach pains where you got to go to the bathroom. I don't want to be stuck in public and do that because I can't do uh, public bathrooms. They freak me out. I am also a semi germaphobe. Like winter time, fall and winter, I'm extremely bad. Um, spring and summer, I'm not as uptight, but still am at the same time. And you know that's another thing that triggers my anxiety. So. I don't know. I don't know if it's just having my daughter or just being surrounded by kids in general with the anxiety as far as, you know, germs and stuff like that. Because I did not have that until I had kids in my life. Um, and I think it's just because they literally pick up everything and bring everything home and touch everything. And like I said, when I get sick, I am a big baby, so I don't like to be sick. But... Enough with what triggers my anxiety and how it kind of all started and, you know, what I still deal with. I have found new ways to kind of cope with that. I do a lot of self-talking. So, really, husband? Hello. Hi. died then the car was full then my husband called um, but like I was saying I do a lot of self-talking and I realize at the end of the day like how you talk to yourself really changes your thought process so I've been trying my best to talk very positive to myself and very uplifting to myself um, like I you know congratulate myself if I get my to-do list done um, I just really pretty much gas myself up I flatter myself um, and it, it does help like you know I'd read about it and I'm like this is crazy like I am not gonna sit here and look in a mirror and talk to myself but it helps I'm telling you the way you talk to yourself will change your whole mood, your whole day, your whole life. Um, so talk to yourself with respect. Talk to yourself how you would want somebody else to talk to you. Um, be your own best friend. Be your own uplifter. Um, also, I got this book from Amazon and it's called Unf Yourself. Um, I will leave it linked down below. I am not I do not want to cuss on this channel as much as possible, but you get the gist of what the title is. And it's amazing. It's one of those in-your-face kind of books, and it's very blunt, and it's very vulgar, and it's very raw. Um, but that's what I need. I need, I don't need a book that sugarcoats and, you know, this is all natural and da-da-da-da-da. I don't want that. I just want somebody to tell me straightforward what I need to do to change my thought process and change my life. 
Um, so, the other thing that I've been doing, um, well, back to the book. The book I read um, only when I am not doing anything and my mind will start wandering. So, like, if we're driving to the store or something that's not, and the store is not right here in town, we gotta drive like 30 minutes, I will read that book just so my mind doesn't have time to think about, oh my gosh, what if this happens when you're at the store and blah, blah, blah. My mind's distracted, I don't think about it, and I'm fine. Um, so the book has really been a help. Let's see, what else have I been doing? Um, I've been really just keeping my mind busy. Um, my mind really doesn't have time to just sit there and think anymore. Um, if I can't just sit down and watch TV or anything much anymore, so I will clean, I will find something to do, I will record videos, but basically I have realized keep yourself busy. Don't let your mind have time to even go to those places. Um, I smoked cigarettes for years. I quit on New Year's Eve night, the second it hit midnight. I haven't had a cigarette since, and it has it has helped here and there with the anxiety. It was one of those things that I kept reading, and everything kept saying, you know, cigarettes are a main um, cause for anxiety, and I was like, oh, so maybe if I quit, maybe all my anxiety will go away. So. I was like, I need to quit anyways. The kids hate it. You know, I hate saying, I, I'll, I'll do this with you after I'm done smoking my cigarette and blah, blah, blah. I hate it smelling all the time. You know, there's times where I do miss certain things about it. You miss your kind of you time. But once I found my own you time, which is cleaning, um, I became infatuated with cleaning. It is my newest obsession and my newest um, addiction. And I rather have that addiction than the smoking addiction. But um, quitting smoking did help with my anxiety after you get past the the withdrawal stage and all that. Um, but now, this day currently, Smoking has helped me with not having anxiety anymore. Well, not smoking has helped me not have anxiety anymore. Um, so if you're a smoker, maybe try quitting or cutting back. Um, but I know it helped me. It was a long process until it finally helped me. <coughs> because when I smoked, it was... When I had anxiety, I smoked to help with my anxiety, which really was not helping. It was really just your thought process. In my mind, I was like, okay, if I smoke a cigarette, my anxiety is going to go away. So take the cigarettes away, and if you're doing normal life and not smoking, it's the same thing. you got to find something to tell yourself, if I do this, my anxiety will go away. If it's breathing, um, like your breathing exercises, if it's yoga, if it's exercising, if it's cleaning, if it's reading, whatever it is, train your mind to think when I do this, everything will just melt away. And that's what I found and it's helping. Don't get me wrong, I still have bad days and it, that's just what's going to happen. But I don't like medication. I don't want to be on medication. So I am trying everything I possibly can to control my anxiety and stuff with my own willpower, not medication. If you take medication to each its own, um, I am not knocking anybody's opinions or what they do. I'm just sharing my story and I don't like medicine. I don't like feeling different, you know, anything like that. I'm sure medication would be a lot easier but I'm complicated and I can't do anything easy in life. So that's my story. Um, if anybody else suffers with anxiety, please leave a comment down below. I would love to talk to um, you guys that have anxiety. I want to know what you guys do to cope with it. 
If you need to talk to me at all, I am here for you. Anxiety is hell, and I wouldn't wish it on anybody in this world, but it happens, and it sucks, but we can always, we can always fix it one way or another. It's just finding what works for you, and that is it, you guys. Okay, so I'm back. Yes, the earrings are off because I was starting to edit the video and I realized I forgot to tell you guys something that is an also big help for me and my anxiety. I do have these bracelets right here and they have little, uh, I don't even know what they're called. They're types of stones. I just dropped one. But I got these for Christmas from my mom, and it's from Vitality. I will have them linked down below. And what you do is you get your oil that you want to use. Um, if it's stress relief, you know, peppermint, whatever oils make you feel better. You just put one drop on one of the beads. Not all of them, just one. <clears throat> um, you could do two beads, but one is definitely enough and you wear it on your wrist like this and you just smell it throughout the day and I, I've noticed that these help a lot especially when um, my stomach's upset I will put peppermint oil on this and lavender and I will just sniff it and it instantly just starts everything starts melting away um, also my husband got me this, and there's another one, but it's in my car, and I'll have it linked in the description below, but it was from Amazon, and it came with two necklaces, and then a whole pack of these sponge type things, and you put whatever oil that you want um, on here, you put it in the necklace, you close it, and you wear it, and you can smell it throughout the day. Um, when I drive, I have super anxiety when I drive. I do not like to drive. So when I drive, I do wear this and I do wear this. I do wear both of them, especially this one because why I drive, it's right here so I can constantly inhale it versus doing this. But both of these are amazing and they're too good to pass up not mentioning to you guys but like I said I will have them linked down below super affordable too they're not highly expensive um, the Vitality they do have their own essential oils brand I have like three from them but I just use um, also the other oils that I have that's from like plant therapy and stuff like that so you can use any type of oil on these, but they do sell their own oil as well. And they have super cute designs, like they have arrows that I don't know if you can see. I might, I'll take pictures and I'll just throw them in here in this video of what they look like. Um, so you can actually see the details and stuff. But yeah, so that is it this time you guys thank you so much for watching like i said everything will be down below if you have anxiety please comment down below and i would love to know your tricks and tips or if you need tips and tricks from me i will be more than happy to talk to you but that's it you guys thank you guys bye we've been trading secrets yeah We've been tracing I regrets. Yeah. A wonderful weekend. I'm hopefully vlogging this weekend. Um, we don't have the boys this weekend. We only have um, our daughter. The boys are going with their mom to their grandma's. So it's just us and Hannah. And we shall see what kind of trouble we get into this weekend. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening, and if you made it to the end, I love you and thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys tomorrow? Tomorrow. Um, no, I won't.
won't see you tomorrow. I don't know. It depends on how I feel. I don't know if I'm working out tonight or not. Tomorrow would be um, a workout video. But I am super sore, you guys. It's not even funny. Like, it is hard for me to do anything. So I'm trying to let my muscles kind of heal. Um, so I don't know if I'll work out tonight or not. So if I don't see you guys on Saturday, I will definitely see you on Sunday for Hannah's Corner. My daughter does her own videos on Sundays. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace, love. I hope everybody is healthy and happy and you have a wonderful weekend. And don't forget to smile and just let things go. Deep breaths. And I love you guys. Bye. We've been trading secrets, yeah.